Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. And today's shout out goes to Sai Dyson. Sai was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins this shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with the review of the new K1 Pro, also known as the Hax Plus, H A X Plus uh, drone. Uh, what is the K1 Pro? Well, it's a small folding drone, as you can see here. Another one of these folding drones. Uh, small, lightweight, although it is not under 250 grams, folks, unfortunately. With its battery installed, this weighs about uh, 274 grams. So this will be or will require registration in most countries because it does weigh, although small and lightweight, it still weighs over 250 grams, unfortunately. However, it is a very capable drone on paper. Um, it has 1503 uh, brushless motors uh, for improved uh, durability as compared to a brushed motor drone. Um, it does have GPS GLONASS system installed for uh, automatic covering and automatic return to home and landing on command on loss of signal or on low voltage. Additionally, it has optical flow sensor in the belly here uh, to enable automatic covering and uh, maintaining position in space indoors when you're flying indoors which you know when you fly indoors you can't really receive GPS very well so it, you still have the capability for automatic hovering indoors using the optical flow sensor on the belly of this drone um, additionally it is powered by uh, a 3 point or is it three, no 7.4 volt that's LIHV battery I believe let me see 7 3.7 no it's oh, lipo battery 7.4 volt, 2200 milliamp per hour, but that gives it up to about 16 minutes, 16 to 18 minutes of flight time. Um, some, place, some places it's advertised at 25 minutes, but if you look in the user manual, uh, the user manual says this will give you about 60 minutes. We'll find out when we go flying actually how much flight time one of these batteries will give you. Um, additionally, this drone has a three axis stabilized gimbal for its camera to provide very good stabilization in flight, okay, uh, keeping the uh, camera level while it's flying. Now the camera itself is advertised, I believe, as an 8K camera, I'm not sure what an 8K camera is, folks, but in reality, this records video and photos to a micro SD card, here's the slot in the belly where you put your SD card, uh, maximum card size is 32 gigabytes, so keep that in mind, don't try Try to put yourself a 64 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte. The card writer will not understand it. But 32 gigabytes and below will work with this. But I mentioned the video. It records 2.7K video, folks. It's 2.7K video, not 8K. And that video resolution, to be exact, is 2688 by 1512 pixels at 25 frames per second. Um, it's not too shabby. That's better than 1080p. I'll give you that. Uh, the photos on this uh, also are recorded at 5700 by 4275 pixels. However, they appear to be uh, crunched frame grabs of the uh, video. Okay, uh, video has been converted to uh, still photo. Okay, um, you'll see when I, I include sample photos of, you know, it looks like it's the video frame grabs have been scrunched down to a 4 to 3 uh, resolution instead of 16.9 um, uh, aspect ratio. That's the correct word I'm looking for there, folks. But uh, again, this appears to be frame grabs, although at a higher resolution than the uh, the video. Um, now, this does give you the capability of viewing FPV video on your phone, along with advanced flight control modes of circle me, follow me, away points, using the HFUN Fly app. Now, the user manual says that this uses the UAV Go app and then it gives you these uh, QR codes that when you actually use your phone to <laughs> download them using the QR codes it downloads the HFUN Fly app. Uh, to be safe I downloaded both of them UAV um, Go along with the HFUN Fly app and I discovered why they're redirecting to HFUN Fly because UAV Go does not bind with this drone, does not work with this drone even though the manual says that's the app to use. Um, in reality, folks, you want to use the HFUN Fly app and that's available on Google Play and iTunes and that does work well with this drone, what I've seen so far. Now, let me give you the caveat to that. 
the video and photos and uh, FPV video and the advanced flight control meter features of that app are all relayed back and forth between your phone and the drone using 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Not everyone has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi on their phone. So before purchasing this drone, I strongly recommend you verify that your phone indeed has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi or you will be very disappointed when you get this drone and discover that your phone does not bind with, <laughs> does not con connect to the drones and you can't use the app. You need a phone that has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi to be able to use that app. So just let you know that, folks. Now, this is also advertised with phenomenal ranges <laughs> okay, of one kilometer FPV range. Now, keeping in mind that this controller does not have a built-in relay, that one kilometer needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Now, there are some phones that will be able to get out to one kilometer. Those phones that have very good Wi-Fi antennas built into them. But the, in reality, folks, most phones do not have uh, um, high dB antennas for Wi-Fi reception built into them. In reality, most folks really expect about 200 to 300 meter range maximum with this drone for uh, most phones. Uh, some phones will get out to about close to a kilometer, but most phones will not. I'm just letting you know that right now. Now, the control range, though, is also advertised at 1.2 kilometers. And that might be true because if we look at the, um, the antennas on this, this antenna is fake on the back. However, the one on the right is not. There is actually a wire going up there. So there, this actually might be able to get 1.2 kilometers control range with this uh, controller. And, you know, even if you fly out of FPV range, we are recording to an SD card. So we will still be able to record video even though we fly out of FPV range using the controller. However, you will be flying blind. I do not recommend doing that. <laughs> but uh, it does... It probably does have the capability to go out to 1.2 kilometer range. Now let's talk about uh, the controller. Uh, this controller has a phone holder that's kind of unusual in that, um, actually I haven't seen many like this one, but the, the phone slides up in here and then you clamp down with these two sides here. Unfortunately, this seems to be made for skinny phones. And my phone is not a skinny phone. You know, <laughs> my phone is a big... Uh, Armor 6E, and it just does not fit properly in this, in that um, it's too thick for this phone holder to use. So I'm going to have to come up with some way to uh, jury rig my phone onto this. So keep in mind, folks, if you have a big, uh, thick phone, it will not fit into this phone holder on here. You're going to have to figure out a way to get your phone to hold onto this <laughs> controller. But let's go over the controller again. I mentioned uh, the antennas. Uh, the one here on the left, again, is fake. The one on the right is a true antenna. The buttons we got on this, looking at on the top here, this is for starting and stopping video. You press that button once, a quick press to start stop video, or start video, another quick press to stop the video before shutting off the drone. Uh, take a photo by pressing this button here. This button here is a scroll wheel for raising and lowering the gimbal. You can do such with this scroll wheel here. Uh, this is your power button here to turn on the... Uh, controller and we do have lights here shown right now we're showing we're in GPS mode and power is on um, the controller does have the ability to switch uh, between um, mode 1 and mode 2 and to do such mode 2 you hold this button down if if it's not already in mode 2 hold this but it's default mode 2 but uh, hold the video button down while turning on the power and that will switch it to mode 2 and if you want to go to mode 1 with the throttle on the right side Hold this button down here, and well, or hold the photo button down while turning on the power, and it will switch to mode one. But again, it is default mode two with the throttle on the left. Other buttons, let's talk about. We got power button here. Uh, we have automatic take, or this is automatic return to home and landing by pressing this button here. Now this slide switch in the center here switches between GPS or if you're indoors. You can turn off the GPS and go fly in optical flow mode using the, the belly sensor of the cam or belly camera sensor. This button here is for automatic takeoff and landing. Press that for three seconds, and the motors will uh, go into um, uh, idle. And press it again, and it should take off. Additionally, uh, we have stick uh, controls. Um, 
on the left here, now this automatically has a geofence of 200 meters turned on uh, as soon as you start and fly the drone. And if you fly out to 200 meters, the drone is going to stop. It's not going to let, allow you to go any further unless you press into this left stick here, the throttle stick. And that will turn off the geofence so you can pr proceed further. Now the area that I normally fly in, I don't go farther than 180 meters maximum around that. So I don't expect to bump into that fence, but we may. And if I do, I'll press that button to turn off the geofence. Um, on the right side, on the pitch roll stick, um, if you press into the pitch roll stick, that activates headless mode. So this does have headless mode capability. And again, activate it by pressing into the right stick. And to do a compass calibration manually, without using the app, you bring this stick up to the right and the stick down to the left. And that will activate compass calibration mode. And I will demonstrate how to do that when we go out into the field. Additionally, you can start the motors uh, manually by bringing both sticks down and inboard and the manuals will enter into uh, idle and you can take off by just giving it some throttle. Okay, let's go over what you get in the, the package. I forgot to mention, I always forget, but you do get a very nice carrying case for this drum that comes with this. So a nice small carrying case with a strap so that you, you know, it makes it highly portable. <laughs> but what, it, what you get is you get the manual um, it's available both in Chinese and English. Front front uh, section is Chinese, back section is English. You get the Kai One drone, and I forgot to mention the batteries. I just slightly mentioned the batteries, but I didn't show you the battery. Uh, it comes out, and again, it is charged. This is what I want to show you. It is charged through a little micro USB port right there. A little uh, blue and red light comes on, and when it's fully charged, the lights go off. So keep that in mind. Along with the um, controller, the controller also has a built-in, here, let's put it like that for now. The controller has a built-in 3.7 volt battery, and you charge that through also through a micro USB port there. So keep that in mind. Let's put the battery, rest of the battery back in. Additionally, you get in a package, uh, a spare battery if you ordered them. It comes available with one battery, two batteries, or three batteries. If you are considering possibly getting spare batteries, I recommend, strongly recommend you get them at the time of purchase as you're going to have a hard time getting them afterwards because of LiPo uh, shipping restrictions. If you buy them at the time of purchase, they bundle it with the drone and that somehow gets through <laughs> the shipping restrictions for LiPo batteries. I don't know how, but it does. Okay, additionally, you get the controller, uh, you get a spare set of propellers, and you also get a micro USB cord for charging the batteries and charging the controller. So that's the K1 Pro. Um, it's a very good drone on paper. Let's see how it actually works though, folks, when we take it out into the field. Hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and welcome to the maiden flight of the Kai 1 Pro. Um, notice I had to jury rig my phone in here. Uh, I don't know why a lot of these drone manufacturers think everyone owns an iPhone 6. It's not true, folks. <laughs> a lot of people got larger phones, so manufacturers out there, if you're listening, think about the people that have these bigger phones, okay? <laughs> Look how I had to rig it on here. Okay, so let's get the Kai One in the air. To start this up, the on-off switch is on the belly right here. Let's press and hold it until we hear the ESCs chirp. The ESCs are chirping. And then put it on a flat level surface so its gyros can calibrate. And then we'll turn on the controller and we should be connected. Now the first thing I want to do is the gyro calibration. Okay, we, to do the calibration, we need to hold the stick in, in, down to the left and up to the right till we hear a beep. And I just heard that beep, I'm gonna do it again. Don't need to do it again. But once you hear the beep, then you check. And your front light should be solid blue and backlight uh, off. So we rotate three times until the lights switch. Okay, now the green light's solid in the back, no blue light in front. We go vertical like so, continue rotating. And there we go. So we got solid light in the front and blinking light in the back, blinking green, and it's looking for satellites when it's blinking. So we still don't have sufficient satellites to fly. Now what I'm gonna need to do now is connect the drone's Wi-Fi signal, the 5G Wi-Fi signal to my phone. 
or have my phone connect to that 5G Wi-Fi signal and then open the app. So hold on while I do that, folks. Okay, this is the HFun Fly app available on Google Play and iTunes. And we should be ready to go, actually. Uh, let's see how many satellites we got here. Uh, 12 satellites. And we are in GPS mode, so we are good to go there. Okay, I'm going to start the video recording first off. Video is recording. And then we're going to hit uh, automatic takeoff. Let's hold on. Let's see if that does it. I press the takeoff button. Let's press it again. I guess we got to give it throttle to take off. And there we go. So, made in flight. Let's get into the picture. See what type of lag, if there's any. There's a little bit of lag. Syncing up the cameras, folks, so my lips are in sync with the drone. Um, and it's holding its position well. So we should be good to go. Let me put my glasses on next. So I can see the drone. And the first thing we'll do is try a range test of the FPV. So push it out, up and out. Let's go to the edge of the road here first. Hit and also I want to go up to about 20 meters so I can see uh, Lake Erie let's pop it there for a second and uh, altitude 31 meters we can see Lake Erie distance 81 meters out pushing forward again popping it again going out a little further I lost FPV reception already, so I'm, I'm flying blind. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not flying blind. I see the aircraft in the sky, but the problem is uh, I'm not seeing any FPV. So we lost FPV at about 80 meters. Right now we're at 204 meters, so we're over the road. So from that position there, let's do that automatic return to home and landing. So pressing the return to home button. Well, it said in Chinese, I guess it's returning home. Okay, I see it coming back. 200 meters out. You know, I'm saying we have some geomagnetic interference. I'm going to hit OK if I can. We still haven't received reception back again, but the drone is flying on its own. So, you know, that's the advantage of having an SD card to record, folks. Uh, when you fly, these FPV drones that record via FPV only, you know, via Wi-Fi only, um, when you fly out of range of the S or of the FPV signal, the video signal, you lose the video. But you don't when you have an SD card. You shouldn't lose the signal when you have SD card recording. So that's the big advantage. You can continue flying line of sight like I was doing there. As long as you can see the drone, you should be able to control it and still get video. So I'm going to stop uh, the land or from hitting the ground because I don't want to cut the grass with my blades. But we'll see how close we are just before hitting down or touching down. I got signal back. That's good. And we'll stop it right there. Uh, it's still continued on to land. Okay, now the next thing I need to check is, am I recording? Mabazin. Mabazin, are you recording? No, you're not. <laughs> so, Mabazin is back on. So, that first flight is just to show the camera. Let's put it back on the pad. And this time, we'll stop the video camera. Mabazin's recording. It looks like the video recording's already stopped. I'm not sure why. Starting and stopping. Now, I'm not certain that uh, I am recording because we lost FPV reception and the app has gone out of sync. And because of that, what I'm going to do, folks, is restart the uh, drone and restart the app. So hold on while I do that. I want to make sure that I am recording. Okay, this is the HFUN Fly app, available on Google Play and iTunes. I hit Start Flying and uh, Start Now. And we should be good to go this time, starting the video. Or I just took a photo, actually. Starting the video camera. And uh, starting the motors with automatic takeoff and landing. But it doesn't do a takeoff, folks. It just starts and stops the motors. So you, to take off, you got to give it throttle. And verifying that we got 13 satellites getting back in the picture again this time. 
and again syncing up the cameras while we're recording. Okay, let's try the advanced features of this thing. Got. Okay, going up a little bit higher and walking over here. Now in the upper right corner, see those three lines? Uh, let's hit the three lines and that brings up our advanced features. First off, we'll try follow me. In the upper right corner, it looks like a transmitter. Click that, that's the GPS follow me. And we're gonna hit okay. And when the, the distance, I guess you gotta be certain distance away. I can't read the, because of my, uh, okay, 30. Okay, I wanna fly mobile phone. Okay, GPS is on. And coming out of that, let's try it and see if it follows. Is it following? Yeah, it's following, it's moving with me. As I move off to the left here. How about the other direction? Let's go to the right. Go up a bit higher too. Will it follow as I walk away from it? It is. Now it's going up and down, I noticed, because of the wind. It's using a barometer to uh, measure its uh, altitude, and when the wind hits it, that does affect it. Now we'll notice, okay, let's walk over here. What type of follow me? It's a DJI style, like we're, actually it's kind of a Hubson style follow me. <laughs> it's maintaining its position to the south of me here. So that's interesting. I like Hubson, Hubson style follow me's. I think they're, they work better. Let's move the, gut, or the gimbal downward. So you see me, but yeah. Let's go over here, try off in this direction now. Yeah, Hubson style. It's maintaining that position to the south of me, no matter what I do. Go over this way. Okay, so follow me seems to work. With that in mind, let's stop it and bring it back over here. Stopping follow me. Follow me has been deactivated. Wait, you gotta hit okay deactivate it and then I'm going to push forward to bring it back over here. Next thing we're going to try is circle position. And from that position there, we're going to click the upper right corner again and the second one down on the right that looks like a circle. Click that and then hit OK. And there it goes into its circle position. Can I adjust the altitude with a stick? No, you can go up. How about pushing out or pushing forward? Pulling back on the stick, does that increase the radius? Can I restart it by pushing either way? Okay, when I pulled back on this stick, that obviously cut off follow or circle position. Let's reactivate it again, bring it back over here. Upper right corner, so it's gotta be in the settings, folks, where you adjust that. Sending, wait a minute. Let's try it again. Hit OK. There we go. Activate it again. So that's the circle position, folks. I got it up in the sky. It seems to do a circle of about uh, five meters radius. Am I even in the, the picture anymore? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> there I am. So coming out of circle. Now, People want to know what about waypoints. Let's try waypoints from that position there. Let's raise up the gimbal. Gimbal back up. Third, uh, hit the three lines, and the third one down on the right is waypoints. Okay. okay. And there's our position. Let's zoom in quite a bit more. Okay, I'm right beside it. And from there, let's try. Can I get a uh, satellite view? Let's try a satellite. No, satellite doesn't seem to work, but let's make, take a position. One, two, three, and back to me, or near me, four. Okay, has been recording. I think we stopped recording, but let's hit submit, and the submit is in the upper left corner there. The setting, please wait a moment. It's 
still recording. Going to second waypoint and should go to one more waypoint. Low battery warning. Okay, what's low battery? <laughs> We're low battery already. Once low battery hits, uh, we go into geofence mode. Can I turn off geofence mode by pressing the... Well, let's first off see if we got a fence. Clicking that the view. Pushing forward. Let's see if we got a distance restriction. Yeah, we do right there. Let's see if I can turn it off by hitting this stick. Or the left stick. No, you can't turn off the geofence for low battery. So for the remainder of the flight... Remainder of the flight, we got to stay within a 20 meter circle, it looks like. So with that in mind, let's go up and get some more video of the area. In the circle position, There's circle the area. Showing the camera and its gimbal. And it's three axis gimbal. Okay. That's the camera. Now let's bring it back down and I'll give you my thoughts. How much battery power do we got? 9%. <laughs> Reducing throttle. And just fly it around. Um, right now my thoughts are, <laughs> it's not 25 minutes flight time, folks. But probably about 15, I'm guessing. Uh, bring it down lower. I'm trying to bring it down lower. I'm pushing down the throttle. It descends rather slowly. I gotta say that. So, right there, sinking it up. My final thoughts. Um, it's a nice little drone. Um, it certainly doesn't have 25 minutes of flight time I, I, as advertised. Um, it's gimbal is working, although, you know. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of bounce here, a little bit of vibrations there. Um, it has a very high uh, resolution camera. It's that 2.7K uh, resolution camera. Uh, that's an oddball resolution, <laughs> but it seems to work. It seems to look good. You are going to need a, a better uh, card for this um, because of that 2.7K. Uh, the FPV range on this was rather short, I got to say. It seemed to be about 80 meters with my phone. Uh, others might get longer ranges. Uh, I'm sure that the control range is much better, uh, much farther. And again, since this has a um, built-in SD card, you should still be able to record video even though you fly out of FPV range. So that is the drone. The wind's picking up a bit. It's only about a seven mile per hour wind, five to seven right now. Uh, but it's bouncing it around as you can see there. Now let me stop the video recording real quick because I haven't tried to show the photos. Okay. Come up higher. Photo. Another photo. Now these photos, I really think are screen, screen grabs, folks. Um, let me lower that gimbal because it, it doesn't want to descend either. That's another thing. Descending, it doesn't descend very well. <laughs> Take another photo. And one more. Um, look, I'll pull down on the stick. Okay, now it's calling me a liar. <laughs> but before, it didn't want to descend. Okay, raising up the gimbal. And starting the video recording one more time. That's a photo. Starting the video recording one more time for the, the final part here. Um, doesn't want to because it's landing. It looks like we're at full of a low battery. So what it does is it brings itself within 20, mi uh, 20 meter circle and it restricts your movement within that 20 meter circle. And then when the final battery goes low, it will land wherever it's at within that 20 meter circle. So that's the Kai-1 Pro, folks. Hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks. <music>